new Survivor, followed by a new Tough as Nails. Wins Coming up, how several groups are trying to make sure everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Some health clinics in the area are dedicated to helping people recover following drug or alcohol addiction. This Thanksgiving, one of those clinics in Prestonsburg is making sure its clients and families in the community get to enjoy a Thanksgiving feast. WYMT Zach Hawk was there for its first ever Thanksgiving box giveaway. Since 2015, Frontier Behavioral Health has been a part of the Prestonsburg community. And CEO Randy Hunter says his team has been asking for opportunities to give back. We had a recovery walk back in September. We're planning an event uh, for the Christmas time. We just want to make sure that we're giving back to our communities every day. The residential director, Chanel Music, says she knows her recovering clients deal with a lot of pressure during the holidays. So we're hoping with these boxes it gives them a little boost to get out and want to cook dinner, invite family over and be a part of everything. And in the event someone cannot make it in person, case managers like Courtney Gullett make home deliveries. This is a community that's given so much to me, and this is just one way that I can give back to those in need. Once clients were served, everyone else in the community got the chance to stop by and get a box for their families. Each kit came with a turkey or ham, as well as stuffing, mashed potatoes, vegetables, gravy mixes, and dessert kits. People need this. We need to help our communities. We need to help the people that struggle the most, so that's what we're trying to do today. In total, Frontier Behavioral Health handed out 100 kits. I see the struggle, the struggle of families that want to do more but unable to do more. We just want to do it to be able to know that we helped somebody that day. Giving the people of Prestonsburg a reason to be thankful this season. Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. Officials from Frontier Behavioral Health tell us that with price increases at the grocery store, it took some smart shopping to put the boxes together on a budget, but they did it, and of course, it was worth it. Some are wondering if there will be enough food to go around this Thanksgiving. Due to global supply chain issues, food availability was a big concern this year. Last year, 1,000 free meals were handed out at Kane Kitchen in Letcher County. Now staff are working to feed the community by preparing more than 3,000 meals. Manager Brandon Fleming says you can even choose whether to eat in or get your meal to go. Either or is okay, but having to offer both, which, which we're fine with that. I mean, there are still people that are guarded against COVID, and, and we appreciate that, and, and them, you know, trying to protect others. And then there's those that have been vaccinated and willing to come in and, and sit down and, and, and get things back to normal. Kane stands for Community Agricultural Nutritional Enterprises. For more information on the free meal giveaway, you can head over to our website at WYMT.com. In Hazard, more than 100 volunteers came together to prepare for the Appalachian Ministry event at the Maple Street Church of God tomorrow. The church is partnering with the Men and Women of Action nonprofit group to help distribute clothes, food, and toys to the people of Perry County. Organizers say they expect more than 4,000 people to walk through the church doors this week. It gives us an opportunity uh, not to get our name out there, but to actually supply some help, uh, supply some relief to, uh, uh, to families in this area that are struggling. The Appalachian Christmas coat, blanket, and food distribution will take place tomorrow at the Maple Street Church of God from 10 until 2. If you are interested in registering for the event, you can call the Maple Street Church of God at 606-439-5078. After a few clouds work through the region earlier on today, we are beginning to get those clouds on out of here, meaning it is getting chilly as we head into tonight. I-64 at Moorhead. You see traffic moving smoothly. Some of that early Thanksgiving travel really kicking into high gear as we head into the day on Wednesday. I-75 at Mount Vernon, quiet at this hour, so nothing too bad going on on those roadways. It was a chilly one. We only got up into the low 40s in many spots today. Pikeville only got up to 39, 37. Logan 
And the cool spot, the winners as usual, Wise Virginia at 36. Chilly around much of the region still this evening. 33 Jackson, the warm spot. Upper 20s, low 30s right now. Look at Monticello checking in at 22. 25 Irvin and in Jacksboro as well. 23 in Jonesville, Virginia. So we have a cold, cold night on the way. Thanks to clear skies, all of our cloud cover from earlier has moved on out. So we're headed down for most of us right where we are now in those upper 20s for overnight lows, though a few lower 20s can't be ruled out. I'll have the latest on when things warm up and unfortunately get a little bit soggier coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. A Pikeful woman died this weekend, leaving behind a community full of loved ones and three kids who relied on her for everything. Kathy Barker died unexpectedly and her kids were taken into foster care as their church and community try to help ease the burden of funeral costs. Student Minister Clay Mitchell says the people of Cornerstone Christian Church are taking up donations to help the kids give their mother the burial she deserves. The one concern they had despite everything they have been through. I let her know quickly that, you know, I would be there if she needed a ride somewhere, if they needed to be taken anywhere. You know, they had school events that sh uh, she wasn't able to take them to, and, and I'd pick them up and, and take them. And, and you know, she, she cared for her kids so much. Donations are available online and through the Kathy Barker Burial Fund at Community Trust Bank or by making checks out to the church. Some Kentucky police departments are taking precautions to keep holiday parades safe. The City of Richmond's Christmas Parade is one of the largest events the city puts on each year. The annual event was canceled last year due to COVID. Now the Richmond Police Department shares what additional security measures they plan to take after the recent tragedy in Wisconsin. Grayson Passmore has that story. Lights are strung. Poles wrapped with garland, ornaments hung throughout downtown Richmond. It's a city that certainly looks ready to host a Christmas parade. It's a joyous event and we should, we should keep it that way. And uh, you know, it's public safety's job uh, to make those events as safe as possible. Following the tragedy of the Wisconsin parade, there's more on everyone's minds than decorating their Christmas floats this year. It's a, it's a moment for law enforcement or anybody that's in charge of any special events like that to uh, take a second look at security and, and take extra measures and, to prevent something like that from occurring again. Richmond Police Chief Rodney Richardson says he and his team are always looking for ways to improve when it comes to keeping people safe at big gatherings like the Christmas parade. But he says they actually made a few big changes to their safety measures a few years back. One of the things that we really try to concentrate on is hard barriers. Uh, uh, extra security personnel to address anything that occurs as fast as possible. Um, and we just try to eliminate as many threats uh, as possible before an event occurs. Chief Richardson says they've seen some of the worst things imaginable happen at parades across the world. The events in Wisconsin, just another reminder of what can go wrong. I think that, uh, you know, law enforcement agencies uh, like everybody else out there will make certain changes to uh, ensure the safety is of all the people that are there and participating and trying to have a, a, you know, celebrate Christmas. But also a lesson in ensuring the event goes right. In Richmond, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Chief Richardson says making additional safety measures has been a team effort between his department and the city. The Christmas parade there in Richmond is Friday, December 3rd. Cases of COVID-19 are ticking up in Kentucky just before families gather for Thanksgiving. During his COVID briefing on Monday, Governor Andy Bashir outlined tips for a safe Thanksgiving. They include getting vaccinated, of course, getting a booster, wearing a mask indoors, and keeping attendance numbers low. Governor Bashir says it's up to Kentuckians to make the right decisions when coming together this holiday season. Nobody wants to look back at their Thanksgiving or Christmas gathering and realize that was when somebody got really sick who is no longer with us. Governor says it will take a couple of weeks to determine how the Thanksgiving holiday impacts COVID cases in the state. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration says Thanksgiving has become the deadliest holiday on the roads. From 2015 to 2019, nearly 800 people died in drunk driving related crashes 
during the Thanksgiving weekend. It typically starts the night before Thanksgiving, so sometimes called Drinksgiving or Blackout Wednesday. The National President of Mothers Against Drunk Driving is pleading with people to be smart and safe as they come together with friends and family. So we know that around the holidays, the numbers typically increase just because people are off work and are more likely to make the wrong decision to drink and drive. But it's all the more devastating around the holidays. It often causes someone to have one less person at their holiday table and have one less family member with them to celebrate Thanksgiving and celebrate Christmas. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has an app called Safer Ride to counteract the Blackout Wednesday trend. It allows users to call a taxi or friend and gives the user's location so their ride knows exactly where they are. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, the Harlan County man is making some big changes. We take a look at his journey from coal miner to respiratory therapist. And our pattern from the last few weeks continues. Unfortunately, the rain chances this week happen to fall on a holiday. I'll have the breakdown straight ahead.